you're probably complaining complaining the wrong way. Are you a complainer, Lauren? Yeah. Whoa, that was fast. <laughs> you, I just know myself. I mean, do I even have to say whether I am or not? No. Yeah, I'm a complainer. <laughs> are you? What? I can be. That was that gentle. I can be, or you are. I can be. <laughs> Sometimes I am very much a complainer. I've seen you be very positive, though. I can complain, though. Believe me, I know how to complain. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Once in a while, I complain, yeah. But I, I suppose of all of us, maybe he's the least complainer. Probably. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, you've, yeah. you've, like, crowned yourself the complainer, though. It's better to, you know, say that you're the worst, and then, like, other people can be like, no, you're really not that bad. But it's better to say that you're the worst. Set the bar low. Exactly. So far, nobody said you're not that bad. I know. I'm just saying. It's better for people to retract and to be like, actually, you're worse. This is true. So uh, th there's a psychologist. His name is Guy Winch. Awesome name. Uh, he's He wrote a book all about this, and he says there's actually a better way to complain. And he says the words vent and complain are used interchangeably, but they often refer to two different forms of expression. On its face, do we agree or disagree? Venting and complaining are different. <coughs> hmm. We don't know yet? I feel like I would say they're different, but I'm not sure why I would say that. Like, what's the difference? Well, here's what he says. Yeah. Venting is about seeking validation and sympathy, whereas complaining comes with a concrete goal. In many cases, getting someone else to do something differently. I personally don't see it that way. When I'm complaining, or may maybe I'm confusing complaining and venting in my mind, like, I just need to get something off my chest. There's n nothing productive happening. I just, I need to be negative for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Jimmy, sit down and listen. <laughs> I need to vent. I've done that before. No, I've that's actually a good way to do it, to be honest with you, in my opinion. I don't, I don't need your advice. I don't need you to fix this. Just let me complain. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm done, go, ah, that must be hard. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I've, I've recently gotten better at that with some good marriage counseling. It's like, huh, wow, ah, it's hard because you want to fix. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going to see if you can buy into what he's saying here. So he says, generally speaking, the psychologist Guy Winch says, people do, do a lot of venting, but we're afraid to voice complaints. And for good reason. It often doesn't go well. Uh, because of how people typically present complaints, he says that uh, they put their loved ones, friends, and coworkers on the defensive and as a result, they often don't get what they want. And so he has a better way in a book he wrote called The Squeaky Wheel. So he recommends a formula called the complaint sandwich. I like it already. Oh, sure, two positive things and then a complaint in the middle? Yeah. I got to this, I was like... That's good. Oh, did you make that up, Guy? I, the sandwich idea? I did that with conferences when I had a student who was mm -hmm. failing. I'd be like, oh, your kid just brightens up my day. They're failing my class completely, but I tell you what, they got a nice smile. <laughs> you're supposed to do that with marriage too right like if you have an issue with your spouse like hey i appreciate the way that you do the dishes without me asking but if you could you know maybe take the trash out too um but thank you for making my day better i'm ready to take the trash out just now you want me to do it right now <laughs> yeah that was so nice so he it's it's a, a series of three statements calibrated to make people more receptive to changing their ways uh, so the first slice is the slice of bread in the sandwich. It's a positive statement that will hopefully make the listener less defensive when the complaint arrives. For instance, in the case of a significant other who leaves dirty dishes in the sink, now we're getting real here. Let's drive Sarah nuts. Put it right in the dishwasher. It's like every day we hear about this. I put it in the dishwasher sometimes. Uh, the complaint might start something like this. You know, you're such a considerate partner in so many ways, and I love living with you. I'd go, here it comes. <laughs> yeah. The meat of the sandwich is the complaint itself. And here's the trick. The meat has to be lean. In other words, all you need to do is the one incident to make your point. Don't present like every offense. You know, don't, you never, you always don't do any of that. Just mm -hmm. stick to the specifics of the present situation. In the case of the dish lever, it's, I saw that your cereal bowl is in the sink this morning. From this morning, I should say. Well, you're laughing. <laughs> you do this to Eddie? No. <laughs> Just as it's important not to include the frustrating uh, incidents at this stage, it's also important not to include a generalization. Like, you didn't clean up, clean up after yourself can veer into criticism. 
you know, because you're lazy, you're this, you're that, you don't care about me, you don't care about my thoughts. It's just, I notice you leave this in the sink. Final components, last piece of bread, and it would it's something like, if you could make an effort to put your dirty dishes in the dishwasher, it would make me so happy. <laughs> you like it, Daria? I do. I like not making the complaint personal and like yeah. trying to psychoanalyze everything this means or dumping all your feelings about what it means on on the other person. Just I I noticed you did did this. Can you please not? No, but you didn't. Even, you didn't do it right. You didn't make it a sandwich. That was just the meat. You have to go, boy, Jimmy. You you're just the most handsome guy I know. I love living with you. You're so nice to look at. I saw that you left your bowl. I'm, tr- I'm practicing. I saw you <laughs> left your bowl in the sink from breakfast. It sure wouldn't make me happy if you put that right in the dishwasher. That, was that it? You forgot the yeah, secondary. The second, the second part of that the was it. No, you, you didn't. You, you got to put the other piece of bread on. Oh, there. yeah. Um, well, that would, uh, you make me so happy is, or like it would make me happy. Is the is sandwich. It? No, it's not. No, that's justifying why you want this thing to happen. Yeah. You sure are handsome, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do it right. It's really hard to do with someone else's spouse, too, I'm sure. <clears throat> no, I'm waiting for somebody to go. Well, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Um, somebody might go, hey, guys, duh. Haven't you ever read Philippians 2? I'm waiting for it. Philippians 2, 14. Why right? don't you jog our memories? Do all things without grumbling or disputing, or if you're reading the New Living Translation, do everything without complaining or arguing. Don't complain. So who cares about, right? Some some Christian person will go, how dare you guys in Christian radio tell say there's a right way to complain when the Bible says don't complain. Ding. Mm. Couldn't find my bell for a second. It didn't say complain, though. <laughs> what do you mean? It says, what it say it again? Well, it depends on the translation. Which one would you like? Uh, both. Okay, so <laughs> the New Living Translation is do everything without complaining and arguing. Okay. And the ESV, English Standard Version, is do all things without grumbling or disputing. Wow. I think I like the ESV better. Why? Because it, that one says grumbling and arguing. Is that what that disputing? one is? Disputing? Grumbling and disputing. Uh huh, correct. So the, I think complaining can potentially have a wrong context, and I'm, I'm no scholar, but maybe that's not, not the best translation, but like, Grumbling is inherently negative. Like if you say yes, I'll do this, and then you're com- you know complaining, grumbling the whole way, mm-hmm. it, that that's a heart issue or disputing. That's creating problems where there don't need to be any. And and yet we had someone call in a number of weeks ago that said, you know, just pick up the dish, put it in the dishwasher, get over yourself. They don't need to conform to you. You be you know a sacrificial person. Yeah, but that goes both ways. Mm-hmm. So what do we do with this? There's actually, um, because uh, honestly, th- this is what will happen. Somebody will read Philippians 2 and go, see, Christians shouldn't complain. Well, that can't be accurate. Or David's got a lot of answering to do Yeah. in the imprecatory Psalms. So is there a way to complain the right way? Can we complain? Should we complain? If we do, what does it look like? We'll get to that here in just a minute. We're looking at an article from The Atlantic in which it highlights a theory from psychologist Guy Winch wrote a book called uh, The Squeaky Wheel. He, he encourages people to complain using the complaint sandwich, complaint sandwich mm-hmm. which is like positive, lean complaint. It's one incident, not a list, not a lifetime, not absolutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then another compliment. Mm-hmm. And that's how you can do that well. Mm-hmm. Well, the, I can just picture the hyper-spiritual person in their car going, well, Bible says don't complain. How dare you, Lauren, say that we should complain. Philippians uh, 2, 14, do everything without complaining and arguing, says the New Living Translation. Well, I, I want to wonder what you guys think of this. I found this from Desiring God Ministries, uh, and this gets to what Daria was pointing out, the grumbling versus complaining. You and Lauren were talking about this. Uh, is grumbling a better word? So the writer says you can complain without grumbling. Hmm. So here's what he says. When we complain, it's frequently evil, but complaining is not necessarily evil. There's a faithful way to complain and a faithless way to complain. Hmm. The Bible often refers to faithless complaining as grumbling and warns us not to do that. Grumbling complaints uh, directly or indirectly declare that God is not sufficiently good, faithful, loving, wise, powerful, or competent. 
Otherwise, he would have treated us better and run the universe more effectively for us. The way we want it. Yes. But faithful complaining does not impugn God with wrong. Rather, it's an honest, groaning expression of what it's like to live in a fallen world. Like the writer of Ecclesiastes does that a lot, like Mm -hmm. the whole book. David does it pretty frequently. Um. I had to talk my way out of this on the way. I was thinking about something that really frustrated me on the way to work today. And I had to stop and go, Brian, the world's not out to get you. Mm. (laughs) Like most people in their lives don't think about you. And they're just, they got their own issues going on. Yeah. And you're just a casualty of their issues. They're not intentionally going, how will I annoy Brian today? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Main character syndrome. Do I have that? I did today. I, I think we all have it to an extent. <laughs> I had to talk myself out of it. But I think the same situation, there would have been a better way for me to complain. Like, my, my heart was, these people don't care about me. Mm-hmm. But what really was going on is I felt bad that I was ignored. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. normal to feel bad that you're ignored. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I have to stop making it about some sort of... Most likely it's not about you. No. It's another person's problem. And you just happened to be there in their way <laughs> when they were having a problem. And they, they don't care about you, not in like, uh, yeah. oh, I don't care about specifically Brian Dolan. It's more that I have other issues and I'm not even thinking about Brian Dolan. Yeah, the, the amount of t- I, I had students that, that would presume this, right? That, you know, I had, I had like 150 students each semester. And they're like, you're out to get me. I, I just don't think about you. I'd be like, I mean, I gotta be honest, I never think about you outside of this classroom. <laughs> I, I go home and I hang out with my wife and I, I'm not plotting against you. Yeah. What's your name again? You know, it's like <laughs> uh, but we all have that that concept. So how can we be better? I mean, I, I like the complaint sandwich, mm-hmm. but I don't like his complaining versus venting, as he put it. It's almost complaining versus grumbling, is how Christians mm-hmm. ought to view it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if you think about in like a work context, you can file a formal complaint against someone, and that's not wrong. It's huh? it's like how you do it and how you talk about it. Are you being unkind and mean about the other person that you're complaining about? Just like with like everything we talk about, it's a heart issue. Right, exactly. Right, because we don't get a pass uh, to not display the fruits of the Spirit when we've had a wrong committed against us. Yeah. So with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and self-control, we can lodge a complaint. Yeah, you you probably should. If someone's being inappropriate at work, you should go lodge a complaint against them so that your HR department knows about it. But that doesn't mean you're in the wrong for complaining about, uh, about them. It It's how you do it. You do it, like, with, um, you know, respect and discretion and in a kind way. You're not degrading or mean about them back just because maybe they did the same thing to you you're just airing the grievance saying this is what happened yeah i like that i think at its heart a complaint is just verbalizing an injustice or a perceived injustice Mm -hmm. and you can handle that well or you could handle that poorly yeah you know without meaning to do so we focus primarily on like marriage and family relationships and work and i think in life primarily that's kind of where those things pop up anyway right Mm -hmm. i mean in church life it might um but work and home, certainly. Uh, so if Eddie were annoying you mm-hmm. or being rude, like, mm-hmm. for example, every every morning leaving his bowl of cereal. Does he eat cereal? Yes. On the counter. Mm-hmm. And you can't just put it right in the dishwasher. How are we going to handle that? Do you like the complaint sandwich? Um, I don't like the complaint sandwich if it's going to be used all the time because then the person you're talking to is going to think, that mm. the mm. nice things that you're saying about them are you're only saying them with something they need to work on afterwards. Mm. I feel like yeah, nice things about someone should be more sacred in so much that like they that you are doing it alone so that it feels more weight. Not be you're not saying it just so that you can say this other thing they need to work on. Yeah, I like that. In fact, it's a it's a practice, I think to be intentionally positive and complimentary, especially to your spouse or your kids. Because mm-hmm. you, let's be honest, they're annoying a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we love them, but totally. they're annoying a lot. And so like, you, you talked off the air about how you and Eddie do this. And Sarah and I are trying, with marriage help and marriage counseling, we've gotten better at, you know, like if she 
does the dishes. I'll be like, hey, thanks for doing the dishes. Last night I made dinner, which was we had meatball subs. Oh, I dumped heck yeah. frozen Yum. meatballs in a crock pot, poured a can of, of or a jar of spaghetti sauce on it, and turned on the crock pot. <laughs> she still yum. thanked me. She's like, hey, thanks for making dinner. I was like, well, it wasn't that hard. She goes, but thanks. Right. And that, over time, you're, you're kind of like filling up your account. Yes. And so her coming to me with a kind, lean complaint should be no big deal at all. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the point you're making, I think. Yeah. I think it could become manipulative ma- manipulative if you're not careful. And then genuinely insincere. Yeah. Uh, I got to come up with a couple things I like about this person before I <laughs> exactly. talk about this thing they did wrong. <laughs> and then they're just like the worst compliments. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I like those shoes. Anyway, Jimmy, knock it off. <laughs> <Right>. Nice <laughs> shoes. Uh, so I think, you know, what else that the complaint sandwich does is it forces you to stop for a minute. And remember, the person's not out to get you. Yes, it's hard mm. to feel. It, it's so hard to do that, though. Yeah, like Eddie is not at I every, every feel morning. Like are out to get me. <laughs> I do too. I, uh, uh, every so the world dumb. is out to get. Me. It's so dumb, but you have to coach yourself out of it. Yeah. And for you, it would be like, okay, Eddie is leaving a cereal bowl out again. Okay. Whew. He can't possibly be doing it to make me annoyed. Yeah. Probably in a rush. He's also got two kids to take care yeah. of. But this drives me crazy. So I love Eddie. Yeah. I have to. This is you talking, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I love him like a friend. Uh, and so I got to come up with like a legit thing about him. Wow, he really does care for Trey and Ellis so mm-hmm. well. Maybe that's why he didn't do this. Uh, see, that's how you walk down that road. It, it can help you stay biblical, I think. Now, you're you're flipping your Bible pages over there. What, what are yeah, we doing? I'm, um, we had a listener suggest to read all Philippians 2, so I was just going to do that. Not on air right at this moment. I'm going to read it first, but that's what I was doing. Okay. If you must ask. Oh, I thought, I thought you were ready to throw down some <laughs> no. Bible trivia for us. Uh, but, I mean, generally speaking, it's Philippians 2 is about having an attitude of Christ and shining mm-hmm. the light of the gospel in your life every day. Like being like Christ everywhere. That's mm-hmm. what it's about, which makes perfect sense when mm-hmm. Paul is saying... Don't walk around grumbling all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Any other comments you'd like to toss in there? We had a bunch of text messages. Someone said, is there a difference between complaining and addressing a situation? Hmm. I don't think so. Yeah, I would say com- complaining is, wh- whether you do it well or not, complaining is your way of addressing the situation. Yeah, because addressing a situation, I suppose, could be positive. Mm-hmm. I'd like to address how talented Daria is right now. I mean, we could do that. <laughs> But we, we don't have to. No. <laughs> Someone said, I think complaining is objective where grumbling is subjective. I don't know if I can go there. Isn't, are both subjective? Like, for example, dish in the sink. There really is, like Sarah prefers a dish to go directly in the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. I prefer to put it right in the sink. Mm-hmm. And do all the dishes at once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is not a better or worse or objective right or wrong way there is a preference but she could still complain that you're putting dishes in the sink is what you're saying because it drives her nutty yeah so yeah i don't know that there is an i don't know if complaining is objective like i could complain about the way ron does something off the air Mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean he's doing it wrong Mm. i might be (laughs) (laughs) i usually am something to consider maybe on friday we'll follow up on this puppy